one of the best parts about this place is that there are heart straws. Oh my gosh. Isn't that cute? It's not really zoomed in, right? It's kind of hard to focus on the end of a straw. Hi. Why are we here today? We are here at La La Land in Dallas, Texas. Coffee. La La Land Kind Cafe. Because, what do you do with your friends? You go get coffee. You go on like, a little friend date. Yeah, if like something's wrong in your life, you go get coffee. You just need to chat it out. If you are dating someone new, you go get coffee. If you are being kind of messy and you need to have a talk, you go get coffee. Okay. You're so crazy. Look. I got you. Ooh, uh, okay, hold on, we gotta cheers. I didn't know you had to cheers coffee. I feel like you should always cheers. 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 <laughs> what is your favorite thing to talk about with your friends? In general? Right now, we talk about a lot of TV. I've started the Bravo universe. Mm -hmm. Summer House, Vanderpump, yeah. Beverly Hills Housewives, Good Winter House. Uh huh. Um, what do you talk about at coffee dates? Um. Well, a lot of my best friends are straight men. Weird. <laughs> so, we talk about sports. sports. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone coffee interventioned you? No. Usually people, because I'm pretty, like, to the point, people will usually intervention me, like, at, at a home. Mm -hmm. But I never want people to feel like I'm ganging up on them because I can come off kind of aggressive. So I would rather come out in, like, a public place so that they, I've like... I never thought that you come across as aggressive. Okay, um, so I will admit that this coffee date is a bit shorter than I like them. I like them to be three to four hours long. That is long, but I'm with you. Yeah, like when I go get coffee with friends, like it's at least three hours. Having a coffee date outside when it's 95 degrees outside. And I believe the last thing you said to me was, I'm about to tell you something really important. I don't remember that. <laughs> Welcome to Studio 3A, a place for people who like to ask hard questions. I'm Roy, and this is Anna. Hi there. Hi. Hi. You're so much better at saying hi than I am. Well, I didn't think it was a competition, but I appreciate that I won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today we're talking about friendship. I love friends. Do people not like friends? I don't think this is a controversial opinion. Well, I mean, I think that you have like, I always think, I'm also like a girl's girl. So sometimes I think about the girls that are like, Oh, like boys are so much easier to be friends with. But like, I love girl friendships. I don't know. Mm. So yeah, like I love friendship. I understand. Do you like yeah. the TV show Friends? No. Why it's not? It's like one of my least favorite TV shows. That ever. is... It like gives I me a headache. Take. <laughs> you just don't think it's funny? No, I don't think it's funny. And I haven't... I don't appreciate the character development. Like, I don't I don't want to rag on other people's wow. favorite TV shows. Like, I know that my stepmom watches this, and she's, like, Friends' biggest fan. And I just... I like Friends. I'm a I respect friend her fan. too much to... I know a lot of people think that it's not nearly as diverse as it should have been, which is a I mean, accurate it was, complaint. It's, it's of yes. its time period. It should have been more diverse. Yeah. That said. No, I, I don't like Friends. I think Seinfeld is way better than Friends. I like Seinfeld a lot, too. Yeah. Um, Speaking of friendship, I asked... <laughs> I, what we're talking about today. <laughs> I asked ChatGPT how to be a good friend. Okay, I'd love to know what a robot Which thinks. Which is basically, like if Dear Evan Hansen, do you know the plot of Dear Evan Hansen? Yes. If that movie was written in 2024, it would start with Evan asking ChatGPT, <laughs> so, how do I make friends? Yeah, literally. So that's where we are today. Okay. Uh, the first, I want to know what, what you think about this. Okay. First idea is to listen actively. Give them your full attention. Let them share their feelings without an interruption and validate their experiences. I mean, I don't think that's wrong, but shouldn't you do that with every human, not just friends? Sure, but let's not be too critical. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry, Chad. I think that's pretty good advice. Great advice. 
Rock on. Thank you. Now, this is a kind of a little counterintuitive to what we just said. Oh. Offer practical help. Well, maybe not. Sometimes actions speak louder than words. Offer to run errands, cook a meal, or help with childcare. Oh, my God. There's nothing I love more than, like, going to the grocery store with my friends. That's so dumb. Like, girls love, like, going to Target. And, like, I don't need anything at Target. But, like, you learn so much about each other. When is you're... Target a grocery store? I mean, the Super Target is. I guess. You know the thing where it's like you go into Target and you leave with... F- it's like what the male response... Started to be like gender roles here. But the yeah. male response is like, <laughs> why are we going to Target? Yes. And the female response is to go to Target. Yes. What do we need from Target? Target will We're let gonna us know. We're going to find out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that happens in my household. Yeah. That happens in my household too with... With uh, two men, so we're breaking <laughs> down. Uh, be there consistently. Check in regularly through calls, texts, or visits. Yes. A hundo per- a hun- P. A, I, a hundo P. A hundred percent. What even was that? So cringy. Is that something you say regularly? No, not regularly, but I did see someone on my TikTok recently say it. And a so I started P. saying it ironically, and then it just came out. No. Not ironically. One of my best friends in college used to say, jokingly, refer to me as her breast friend. Just it <laughs> no, it's and not that funny. And then she would funny. accidentally say it like to people she did not know. Like, this is my breast friend. It's like, you don't have enough social control for this to be a habit of yours. Yeah, I understand. Um, encourage professional help if needed. If they're really struggling, gently suggest professional help like counseling. Yeah, I'm a I'm a regular on that. If the girls come to me and they're like, I'm really struggling. I'm like, are you on anxiety meds? I mean, yeah. listen, I take Celexa. No free ads. <laughs> I think it's a generic product at this point. Yeah. Why would you not pay $10 a month to be a happier human? Right. And that's, I just like. If it's like, something that you struggle with. Yeah. I have I, anxiety. Yes. And it's like. Why would I not pay money to just like a small amount just to be like a more normal like person? Relaxed, like yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. To be more myself, honestly. Yeah. Um, give space when needed. Are yeah. you good at giving space or no? Yeah, I'm good with giving space as long as I know like why there's space involved. Mm. Like I don't mind, I don't mind like backing off, but like I'm also you can ask any of my friends that I've like made especially in my adult life i'm always like do you want to come to this if not like no worries literally like that's i like good, have no you don't pressure want people to feel like you're ghosting them right because that's an awkward like right. there's, i needed you and right. you weren't there and i was like well i was giving you space to process right. yes and when there was only one set of footprints that's when i was carrying you so that's uh, a reference to a Jesus the last poem. uh thing oh no there are two more uh send thoughtful gestures that's really like it says oh my god i'm a gift. i love gift giving it's my crack. So bad at it. I love it so much. I buy dumb shit all the time. <laughs> like, I'm going to Maybe my... Maybe that's why you're always a target. <sighs> Last one, stay patient. Mm. Because a recovery from a difficult time can be a slow process. That's true. I mean, I think that we forget sometimes that, like, going through hard times changes us, kind of, like, innately, because we're learning from what we've gone through. Yeah. And, like, we emerge as different people. And the hard part about going through something hard is that generally, like, generally, you're the only one going through it, so you're changing, but nobody else is. And, like, that requires a lot of patience yeah. on all ends, to yourself, to your friends. When I was in I thought high you were school, rolling your eyes at no, me, no, no, and I was no, like, no. I was just getting ready dang. to speak, because okay. that's all I'm really thinking about. Um when I was in high school, uh, my girlfriend and I saw the movie P.S. I Love You, mm-hmm. where, spoiler alert, at the beginning of the movie, the guy dies. And um, then she spends, like, a whole period mourning his death, and right. she, like, doesn't leave the apartment for, like, a month. Mm-hmm. And after the movie, my girlfriend was like, that's such a sad movie. And I was, I said something along the lines of, like, it was weird how she didn't leave the apartment for a month. Like, she should have moved on. <laughs> her- so mean. So, yeah, staying patient might not be my strong suit. Also, we should have known that that relationship wasn't going to work out for a number of... For a number of reasons. Anyway, I have patience for you, and I'm really g- proud of how you've grown and changed since this that moment. This entire show is just me saying all the things I'm terrible about. <laughs> and you're being like, yeah, I'm kind of better at that than you are. So. <laughs> that's not true! That's, so that's what I'm getting out of. If you think that you are better than me, leave a comment. Leave a review... 
subscribe, email us. Yeah. You can find our email on the, our website. Go to the staff page. Yeah. Uh, next, we're going to, you're going to preach. No, I'm going to poem next. <laughs> How does this show work? What is the order? I'm going to do a poem. You're going to give a message. We're going to be back for wrap up. My own failings are not this funny. <laughs> it's funny to watch it happen in real time. Oh my gosh. This is Just to Say by William Carlos Williams. I've eaten the plums that were in the icebox and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious. So sweet and so cold. There are many famous groups of friends. Jerry, George, Elaine, and Kramer. Carrie, Samantha, Miranda, and Charlotte. Rachel, Monica, Ross, Chandler, Phoebe, and Joey. I could go on and on. And I love groups of friends. Sometimes we see the ones on TV more than our real life friends, especially for those of us that love a binge watching weekend. And certainly we can learn a lot from them, just like we can learn a lot from our own friends. Our friends sometimes are the ones who teach us who we are, what's important to us, what our non-negotiables are in friendship. Sometimes our friends remind us of how we've grown or how we've changed and when we've accomplished our dreams. And I deeply believe that our friends can remind us of God and how God works in our lives. As we're talking about the book of Job for the next few weeks, we enter Job's friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. And while I don't think that this group of friends will be listed as a famous group of friends anytime soon, maybe just because their names are so hard to remember, I do think that the dynamics between Job and his friends has an important lesson for us. And that is that we see both our pure nature and our human ego reflected in Job's friends. And what I mean by that is that when you read the book of Job and Job's friends show up, the very first thing that happens is that their hearts break. You can read it in the words of scripture. They can't even believe that it's him because he looks so different. They see his suffering all over him and they cried out to God in lament. They sat with him in silence, not trying to fix it, but just trying to be present. And that's one of the purest things that we can do. <laughs> We're not God. We can't fix anything and we can't take someone's suffering away. Although we might like to pretend it doesn't exist, it's actually not helpful at all to avoid suffering. Arguably, it can make things worse. So then Job speaks and that's where it starts to go wrong for his friends. I would argue that their human nature gets awkward or uncomfortable and they want to start dialoguing with him about his suffering. Sometimes even getting to the point that they're saying that Job must have done something bad because bad things are happening to him. And the reason that I say that they must have gotten awkward or uncomfortable is because I've been there. And I assume that you've probably been there too. When someone you love is going through something difficult, like a diagnosis or a job loss, a death or a traumatizing life event, whatever, there's usually a point where they're talking so much about it, or even worse, there's so much silence between you that you feel like you need to feel this, fill the space. So we start talking and it's never very helpful. I mean, in Job's case, Job and his friends talk back and forth for like 30-ish chapters of scripture, which is insane. And when you really think about it, how helpful is it actually to say things like, well, everything happens for a reason or God doesn't give you more than you can handle or my favorite God closes one door to open a window the thing that all three of these phrases have in common is that at some point they're trying to explain away our suffering even if you think it's full of hope it's usually not I think sometimes people us say things because they don't want us to focus on the suffering at hand they want to lighten the mood or change the subject or think about the future. But think about it for a second. Unless you're actually asking for any of those things, when you're suffering, is lightening the mood or changing the subject helpful? 
generally not. Generally, it's not helpful at all. So what if instead we leaned into showing up, into being present? What if we decided that suffering wasn't ours to fix or take away or try to explain what God is doing? What if we just showed up? What if we showed up with food or showed up to mow the lawn? What if we held each other's hands and just sat in silence? Instead of opening our mouths, let's practice being together and keeping our mouths shut other than saying things like, I'm here for you and I love you. One of my favorite shows of all time is Gilmore Girls. And if you're a fan, you know of the devastating episode where Lorelai and Luke break up. And Rory, I think, is someone that I would want beside me when I'm suffering. Take a look. You slept? I guess. Feeling better? Sure. Maybe not. You should get back to Yale. Mm-mm. Right. You can't just stay here. Sorry, I'm here for the duration. No, uh, what? need supplies. I'm fine. There's no sign that you've eaten or had anything to drink. Well, I'm not hungry or thirsty. Well, if you're staying up here, you need supplies, sustenance, entertainment. No. See, you're a little thirsty, aren't you? A little. What can I get you? Water? Bourbon? Water is good. What do you got food-wise? Not much. What's not much? Like nothing. Some moldy bread I've been eating out mostly. Okay, I'm going on a run. I'm not hungry. I'll get you some DVDs, too. Do you want magazines? No. I'll get you some magazines. You sure you don't want bourbon? Honey, you have stuff to do. This is my stuff. I'll be back in a flash. <gasps> the Rory doesn't have anything to offer other than sustenance. She doesn't even want Lorelai to get out of bed and move to the couch. She runs around town, grabbing Lorelai's favorite food and snacks to let her wallow for as many days as she needs. Suffering doesn't need to have God's purpose behind it. It doesn't happen because we deserve it. We don't need to explain it away. What if we stop trying to make other people move on from their suffering and instead sit with them in it? So it might be because my ears are still a little clogged from my cold. I really think you need to go to the doctor. I will probably go see a doctor okay. at some point. Good. Um, what I heard was there's nobody you would rather have with you in a crisis than Roy. And I'm just really honored that you feel that way about me. Um, yeah, yeah, we've really suffered together. Yeah, and yeah. I've always been there for you. Yeah, always. And I just appreciate that. Um, you said that you, um, one of the good things is just presence and not necessarily needing to talk and yeah. say things and fix things. It's so hard. You're though. kind of a talker. How is yeah. that for you? Um, I think if I remember, like I was watching, so you know I'm on the Bravo verse. Right. So I'm watching Summer House uh -huh. and um, Amanda, who's engaged to Kyle, uh, spoiler alert, sorry. <gasps> um, I know I'm Amanda and Kyle get engaged? <laughs> Wild. So anyway, she like, she says something in an episode I watched recently, and she says something like, I, instead of reacting to the situation, I reacted out of my feelings to the situation. And so I've been thinking about that a lot, and I'm a better human if I remember that, like, my feelings aren't always what the situation needs. Yeah. But you're, like, but my opinions are correct. And I need to share them with people. This is how a one, <laughs> I mean, an Enneagram one responds to a situation. I understand. One of my favorite authors says uh, opinions are underdeveloped thinking. So I've also been thinking about that a lot lately. My opinions are fully developed. <laughs> Maybe your opinions are underdeveloped thinking. Well, do you? My opinions have been through the ringer. They're coming out ready to print. <laughs> but when somebody else is suffering, do you offer your opinions? Yes. Does it go well? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're honest. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I would be curious if our friends who are watching, like, do you say something when somebody else is suffering? Or do you find yourself, like, keeping pretty quiet? Or how do you be present? What do you do? Like, being present that's not talking. To me, like, when you're with someone, you got to talk to them. So how do you be present without necessarily trying to fix it? Okay, let's see if you can not talk for 10 seconds. Oh, I'm really good at not talking. Well, that's... I, you, like, talk less than anybody I know, I so... Know. <laughs> I'm maybe so this isn't really a problem that I'm facing in my life. Okay, well, maybe... 
we you should noodle on that and come I'm gonna back to noodle, this. and I'm okay. gonna spit out a fully formed opinion. <laughs> At least he's honest. Yeah. Um, I think suffering's so hard, but I really do believe that if we can remember that somebody else doesn't always need our opinions, that can sometimes make it better. So I hope that's something to chew on this week. Um, and let us know. I thought you were literally going to start chewing. I was, and then I was like, that was dumb. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> and I think that's an end. We're good. We, have, we, <laughs> we see you next week and that you're not still literally chewing don't, by then. Don't literally chew on it. Figuratively chew on it. We'll see you next time. Bye.